Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go over some examples that we didn't get to in class today. Um, man, if you think you don't need to go over these examples because they're too simple, please remember the focus of this class, right? The numbers are secondary to us. There are concepts embedded in these examples that you need to know, okay? So for the first example, now um, we're going to be using this idea, right? This is our big equation for this uh, chapter. Um, and let's take a look at what we've got. We've got a six kilogram object undergoes an acceleration of two meters per second squared. If this same force is applied to a four kilogram object, what acceleration will be produced? Now, obviously, this is your equation. Those are your numbers. They're pretty easy. There's something more here, okay? So let's take a look at this. Now, it's actually going to be a little bit easier to use this form of Newton's second law rather than uh, this one at this point. We'll see that quite frequently as we go. So what we've got is we've got some force is acted on some object of mass m, we'll call it m1, and it gives it some acceleration, a1. Okay. Now, the question is, if this same force, the same force F, notice no subscript for either of them, they're the same force, is applied to a second object of a different mass, we'll call it M2 in this case, what acceleration will it produce? So what's the acceleration of the second object? Now, right now, we're just assuming that it's all in one dimension, okay? Um, so the vector part is, you know, just positive and negative will tell us our directions for that. Now, notice if the force is the same, let's take a look at our algebra here. We'll see that one thing we can do is write this out as M1A1. If those forces are the same, then M1A1 is equal to M2A2. And what we're searching for here is A2. What is the acceleration of this second object here? Okay. Well, easy enough to see that if we're going to get A2 isolated, we're going to divide both sides by M2. Okay, cancels them both here. Now, this is not the most convenient way to write this in order to see the concept that's involved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of isolate the M1 and M2 from the A. We go M1 over M2. So M1 over M2 times A1 is equal to A2. Now, take a look at what we see from this, okay? The acceleration of the other one is a direct result of the ratio of the masses multiplied by the acceleration of the first, okay? Now, the ratio of the masses is really important. And in fact, we'll see the ratio of masses ends up being more important than the masses themselves quite frequently. Okay? Now, for this one, we said that M1 was 6 kilograms. And M2 was 4 kilograms. Now that's all nice, but we'll see, again, it's the ratio of masses that matters. If we were to put those numbers in here, M1 is 6 kilograms, M2 is 4 kilograms, we'd get 6 kilograms over 4 kilograms multiplied by whatever that acceleration is. Okay, so what happens to the units here? Well, the units cancel we could have a simplified ratio here, but notice that all that's left is the ratio of the masses. The masses won't end up mattering. So we've got three halves A1 equals 
A2. Anytime we have a ratio of masses that is 3 to 2 like this, <clears throat> the acceleration of the second object is always going to be one and a half times the acceleration of the first object. You can see this if we just choose different values for the masses. All right. So we had M1, two, A2, let's go. We'll say M1 equals, that's a good one. Um, no, that's three to one. Three to two, let's go three to two. Three to two. If these are the masses now, 24 kilograms and 16 kilograms instead of 6 kilograms and 4 kilograms. Um, wait, shoot. If we put these numbers into the same thing, well, we get 24 kilograms divided by 16 kilograms. A1, A2. And again, the units cancel. 24 divided by 16, well, they're both divisible by 8, and we get the same exact ratio. So we can see that the ratio of the masses matters more than the masses do themselves. You get the same exact result with the same ratio of masses if they have the same force on them. Another thing we notice is that the units of mass don't matter. It would be the same if this was 24 grams and 16 grams. We would end up with the same pure mathematical ratio as we did in the beginning. So we can see quite a lot from this seemingly simple problem.